I have a mouthpiece clamped here ready to get a bite plate. The way I make these is I start with a, a pink dental epoxy. It's the same kind of material that's used in Gardala's, the original handmade ones. And I add a little bit of red uh, coloring to it so it turns into a red bite plate. I found I've taken some notes and I found that if I measure out, these are some uh, uh, baking spoons or cooking spoons that are calibrated in non-standard terms. That's called a pinch. This one's called a smidgen. So I uh, found out if I use a pinch and a smidgen, create a little well there. I'm going to mix up a putty. monomer bottle here where I start with one drop on the bite plate and I have notes here to tell me that I use about seven drops here okay I have, a lot of the times I will use masking tape on the sides and just kind of mix bite plates and bite plate repairs that way, but sometimes the edges don't come out real clean. Um, so, at least for this one, try to do the putty and shape it root. Depends on the material too, how well it, how well it sets. So have that the basic material mixed up put it over the bite plate and kind of pull the plastic back and try to shape it some to kind of rough it in, let it set some, and then you can come back later and uh, shape it the rest of the way. Try not to get too much excess, because the extra, the more extra I have, the more shaping I need to do to finish it. Let that set a little bit while I mix up another one. Okay. Second one gave me a little more trouble. Not sure where that is, but I don't do these every day, so sometimes my technique can be inconsistent. Okay. Go back to the first one. You can actually push it around a little. Sometimes I use like the back of a brush handle to kind of roll it the high spots into the low spots. fingernail to get rid of parts that are overhanging on the side. Not all acrylic works. Did I call that epoxy before? It's a dental acrylic. Not all acrylic is easy to work with as it sets, but this is a stockpile I have of a product called Fast Cure. And they don't make it anymore, and I haven't really tried to find a substitute since I haven't run out of it yet. 
a low spot right there. I may have to touch that up with just a little bit of the mix. Unless I can roll some into into that area. This stuff also shrinks a little, so it's another factor sometimes you have to deal with near the edges it'll pull back so this is now getting set up enough that I can't really smooth all that out I'm gonna have a wrinkle there unless it's high enough I can sand it out Okay, I'll probably have to touch that up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to let that set and then show you how I put the white designs in it. Okay, it's the next morning. Got my bite plate, red bite plates roughed in, and I'm going to create a let me take a design out of white. I'll leave that on there. I've got a, a bite patch on here. But it's shaped like that. It's kind of a two with a little bit of a vortex swirl. That's the design I use on this. I'm going to put that in freehand using that as a guide. And then we'll put in some white acrylic powder. I think I'm going to do it freehand. Sometimes I use a, a marker to put the design on. each have their own unique style. Vice here. Sometimes I put a, a drop of monomer in there first, but I'm going to try putting the white acrylic powder to get a start. And I'm going to put that here to. Problem is that it will shrink after I get the monomer in there. So now we put. another drop. You can either do that in a couple layers like that. You can use a paintbrush to try to do it all in one. There's my paintbrush. This is the tool that most, uh, this is fingernail acrylic. I use a, a number of different brands. Sassy is a good uh, monomer, which I put in the squeeze bottle, the way they do it is they usually dip this in a, a little crucible 
then dip it in the powder, get a little bit to load up on the brush, and then they kind of turns into a putty, and they can apply it that way. I do. You can do it in a variety of ways, though, but it's pretty forgiving material to work with. Don't have to worry about mixing it exactly right proportions, but um, goes faster for me if I just kind of put a little liquid in there, pour some on, brush it in. That's looking pretty flush there. And it doesn't matter if it kind of goes over into the red bite plate because you're going to end up filing and sanding that down a little bit and, until it makes the final shape. Clean a little off the red while it's still not set. Okay, so we'll see how that hardens overnight. Okay, here the next day, let's see what we have. I already see that I have some touch-up to do on one of these at least. There's a low spot right here of the red I'll have to do, but before I do that I'll finish it some just in case uh, another void opens up or I see some other low spot. That's usually the way I do things. Um, I think sometimes I just go ahead and start filing, um, but if I'm worried about scratching the surrounding area, it can make more work for me. I uh, sometimes mask off a bit of it with electrical tape. I do do this when I, uh, especially if I have plating, I don't want to mess around with. At least here, if I scratch the brass, I could, I could finish it out. But if I'm working on a client's mouthpiece, I'll make sure I mask it off. The only problem with masking is it makes it hard to, to judge the thickness of the bite place in, in case you got to lower it down to make it flush. But you can pull it off near the end of the job to kind of see where you're at. Uh, starting with a... What size is this? Double O file. I have a file card to clean the file off. So I'm shaping. It feels like there's a high spot. I guess a lot of guys who make mouthpieces just do all this on a belt sander. Uh, um, I can't dial it in with as much precision as I want doing that. And sometimes I take too much metal off. I think if I had a blank that had a lot of metal in the tip, that would be a better way to do this, a more safer way. It's getting down to a good shape. And after that, we'll switch to finer files to get a nicer finish. Okay. I like to go then next to a 
single O file. I'm seeing in addition to this low spot here, I probably could use a little bit more material on this edge. I could probably get away with rounding it over as that would be comfortable to play on. So I gotta decide if I'm gonna put more material or just round everything over. But there's not much I can do about the low spot other than adding material. Okay, after that file I switch to a number two. It's about the finest file that I use. And you're really not doing a lot of shaping with this. Here you're just trying to file out the file marks from the previous file. Though I am doing a little shaping on the edges. Okay, then we go to a coarse sandpaper. You can actually shape with this. I could even skip this step. This is about a, what was it, 220. That's actually so coarse, it may be a step backwards in terms of finishing, but that's the way I do it. Then after that, I move to a 300. I should get a fresh piece. I preview. I have these pre-cut and marked. I set three on the bag. It's probably 320. Oddly enough, though, even some 400 grit can be more coarse than a 320, depending on the brand. So. I have that case here. I have a four, pile of 400s, but really not, not that much different than my 300s. Okay, after the 3, do a little bit of 4. This is an older 4, but it's still got some grit on it. Let's start going. Circular motions, too, helps to get out straight lines. Since I have to touch this one up, I probably uh, would not go into this much detail since I'm going to have to repeat those steps a little bit, at least for the corner, but for the purpose of the video, I'm going to keep muscling forward. So that's a 400. And a 600 I have to find. 600. I've even touched up the logo. Sometimes I find after I lower everything I'm not satisfied. This is probably okay, but I've got a little red spot there. This could be a little more pointy out there. Uh, but function functionally it's going to be fine for your embouchure. It still has a, a handmade look, which is what I am trying to convey. So a little bit of irregularity is part of its character, as long as it's functional. Okay, it's 600. 
after I that's about as fine as I go then I switch to some 4-0 steel wool let's pull the tape off okay I may need to detail the edges a little bit with a pocket knife but they're pretty good okay and the last step I'll bring out my polishing compound a little rag. It's the same procedure I do for bite area repairs, finishing of hard rubber or plastic. It's an abrasive putty that gets out the scratches from the steel wool. And that's how I go from there to there. I'll do this one and then I'll touch up the other one. So with everything else done now, bite plates, facing, baffle, exterior finishing, I like to engrave a serial number. I use 17 on here for the year and 01 for, or 02 depending on which how far into the year we are. Uh, I use a, this is not a super great engraver, but it gets the number on there a little deeper than a, than a scratch. So, I use a, uh, the smallest round burr I have. On the other side, I have my mojo and the tip opening. Mojo 106. Okay, I'll do the other one. And we'll be ready for plating. Okay, just came in the mail the box of the two mouthpieces plated by J&J &J Woodwinds in Shreveport, Louisiana. Does a nice job. Same box I sent it in. Now the size on this one's 106. Part way through the video, many of you may have noticed that I switched from making two 110s to targeting for one around 105 and one around 110. Um, I did this because part of the way through making the video, I sold one uh, in the 105 and I, uh, I was actually out of that size and so I wanted to replace that. So we got a 106 and a 110 here. The only other thing I well, let's put them under a little, little better looking background. <laughs> so, the only other thing I do with these is since I offer trials, is I uh, put a bite uh, patch kind of protecting material. I got a roll of this. I can't remember where because I've had it for a while and I I don't use a lot of it. But Saks on the web, somebody had a source for. Uh, it's very thin, but it, it does offer a level of protection, so I just clip off some of that and put it on there, and um, it kind of has a cloudy appearance to it. Here, there's one that I, that I have already had it on. That one's a little crooked. I might have had it out for a trial, and it moved a little, maybe in the heat. But, uh, yeah, it has a cloudy appearance to it, but offers protection, so I'll do that. And uh, these are uh, on my website for sale, for trial.